to say. <laughs> I hope it was good. Um, thank you very much for taking time out to come and uh, listen to me speak. Uh, the name of this presentation is Sport is a Business and Business is a Sport. Uh, I'm very lucky to travel around the world speaking mainly to companies, uh, sometimes to, to universities, to schools, uh, to sports associations, about my experiences. But I love speaking to companies and to organisations to talk about how sport is a business and business is a sport. I think they are, are, are very similar, in fact they're the same thing. The only difference is the actual activity that we take part in. In the world of sport you have competitors, in business you have competitors. In the world of sport you have to train for your trade, in business you have to train for your trade. So what I would like to do is just give you some of my ideas of how you can take that mindset of a successful sports person and use that in your life as a business person. I believe that the mindset of a successful sports person is no different to the mindset of a successful business person. We won! <laughs> Great win won that race. Fantastic result. Absolutely brilliant. Our plan worked. It was the perfect thing to do and it worked perfectly. We should have lost the race by 28 metres. In the end we won it by 2 inches, 2 centimetres. Not much, but it was enough to give us the gold medal and the Americans were silver. Now after Chris went over the finish line and we were all starting to cheer and run on the track, I heard one of the Americans, I think it was Quincy Watts, the guy who I ran against, shout something out. I'm going to change a few of the words. But he said something like, how the flip did that happen? <laughs> I'll let you work out which words need changing. And it was a very rude, um, or no, it was a very crude question, but actually it was a very, very good question. How did that happen? How did a team of four British athletes that were three seconds slower, nearly 30 metres slower, maybe 28, 29 metres slower than the American team, how did that win? How did we win? And it really does come down to great teamwork. But I can't leave it there. I can't just say it was great teamwork and move on. I have to explain a little more. Now this is where the link between sport and business takes place. Let's go back the night before the race. Chris comes to our room with Roger and says, Hey guys, I have an idea. You need to put me on the last leg. The first thing you have to look at there is we had a member of our team, or our organisation, however you want to call it, coming up with a completely crazy idea. Something that had never been done before. What does that tell you in the business world? That sometimes, in order to succeed and be long successful, you have to be brave enough to take chances of what you do. If you keep on doing the same thing, and you keep putting the same thing in, you're going to get the same things coming out the other end. Sometimes you need to do things differently. You have to dare to be different from everybody else. But it was the quickest I've ever run, so I was going in the right direction. So I said, oh, brilliant, fantastic. Well, what was the time then? And my coach said, you tell me. You tell me what you think it was. And before that race, my best time for 300 metres was modest, 32.3 seconds. In fact, it was 32.32 was my personal best. And I felt I'd run about 32.1, a couple of tenths quicker. And I said to my coach, I think I've run 32-1. He said no. So I thought, okay, 32-2. It's only one tenth, but it's a personal best, and it's a step in the right direction. So I said 32-2. He said no. It's quicker than 32-1. Ah, okay. 32 flat. No. 31-9. No. 31-8. No. 31-7. No. I said, hold on a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's the world record for 300 metres? My coach said 31.62 seconds. That's what it was, by the way, at that time. 31.62 seconds. And I said, so you're just telling me I've run quicker than 31.7? He said, yep. I said, 31.6 something? He went, yep. I said, what is it then? And he gave me the paper. The world record was 31.62. I ran 31.67. So I was five hundredths of a second outside the world record. And now we have a challenge together. And the challenge is to get this back to its normal state. So when we first start out on any challenge, you're full of enthusiasm. 
you want to prove to everybody that you can actually do it. So you start with a lot of enthusiasm, you, you maybe start at 100 mile an hour, you work away. And it doesn't take long before you begin to see some of the fruits of your labour, some of, some of the results of the work that you're putting in. You can start seeing a little bit of shape coming to it. Which in this case, let me just work this out, got that there. Which in this case, we've got pretty much the first side done. And I'm not quite where I want it, so let's just move that there. I do talk too much, yes. <laughs> I need to concentrate. Yes. Um, so there we go. Hang on a minute. There we go. So now we have one side done. You mess up too well. You mess up too well. So there we go. We have one side done. But I haven't actually only just got one side done. If you turn it up like that, and you can see I've just twisted it a little bit. Do you notice the top row? Just the top row. All the colours are in the right order and are and all the same. So we have a row of red, a row of blue, a row of orange, a row of green. So one third of the cube is done. Believe it or not, that's the easy bit. And like life, when we set ourselves targets or goals, the first part can be quite easy. When I first started running, I didn't train very hard at the age of seven, but I used to, every time I raced, I would set new personal bests. Big chunks of time would come off. Only as I got better and better, where is it? There it is, there it isn't. Uh, I didn't think it oh, right, I can't believe that. Uh, only as I got better, that I had to train a bit harder in order to run a new personal best. So, it takes a little bit longer to get the second part done. And you can tell because I am talking more. Uh, uh, but here we go. We still now have, we still have the white side done. But now if I turn it sideways, what do you notice? Two rows. Two rows of every colour. Yes? Now we come to the hard part. The top part. This can take as long as the whole cube has taken so far to get right. But, hopefully, it's not going to take that long. So, let's have a look. So, now I do have to concentrate. Let's have a look. Are you uh, at music? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. This is the hardest part. Here we go. We do that and with a bit of luck. We should be somewhere close by, yes we are, and now if we go like that, do that, turn that there, turn that there, there we go, we've got it all, no we haven't, looks good from that side, you're all impressed with that side aren't you, so I could just walk out and say goodbye, like this. but if I turn it around, it's nearly there, but it's not quite, so we have two pieces that are missing, they're, they're in the right place, but they're the wrong way around, what do we do? Someone says, pull the stickers off. <laughs> yes, I could turn around and pull the stickers off. But in our lives, can we do the equivalent of pulling the stickers off? Certainly can't cheat in sport. Can't take the shortcut. Got to do it the correct way, the same as in business. So, we now have, not a problem, what do we have? A challenge. I'm going to take this challenge on. Now, it might take a little bit longer to do what I've set out to do. I may have to ask for some help, I may have to think, figure away myself, but a few more twists, a few more turns, and not only have we raised to the challenge, but we've got it back to its normal state and the cube is back how it started. Now, thank you.